So one thing that history and science teachers are often assigning readings or in a lot of cases where the students are struggling, what they, some of the choices that they make is actually instead of assigning the reading, they'll modify the reading or they'll just deliver the content. Students need to struggle to learn. We have a poster up in every single one of our classes. It's a picture of Frederick Douglass and it's a quote that says, there is no progress without struggle. And the truth is, so often we are preventing students from doing the most important thing is working. And what the Common Core Standards does, it, pro it pushes kids to do the work. And we have a saying also at our school that says, whoever's doing the working is doing the learning. And what happens is we have teachers that are working their butts off. They're working so hard. We have teachers that are working extremely hard. They're going through the classroom. They're sweating. They're doing this song dance. They're spending hours trying to create something that will turn on the students so they can understand the curriculum. But the truth is they're working hard, but they're delivering it in such a nice packaged, packaged way. Or they're eliminating, eliminating the struggle. And so much of where we learn is from struggle. I'm just going to tell just a quick personal story. I've spent the last, I, I have a nine-month old boy, and I spent the last two months watching him learn how to climb. First, how to crawl and how to climb. At first, he would crawl up to the same kind of stool, and he reaches up, and he kind of tests his balance, and he ultimately fell on his butt. And then he would do it again, and then he fell on his butt. And it's all right now. You're worried. You don't want to get hurt, but we, we let him do that. Then he realized how to get up there, so then he walks up to another thing, and then he realizes he can hold with one hand. And, his balance. and eventually, over two months, he can crawl, and we call it transfer. He can go from one thing to another. He climbs of you, but he wants to climb everything. If we had, when the first time that he had tried to climb on that stool, if we had said, oh, let me help you, or we had put the stool lower, or we had held his hand, or if we had sat there and never let him feel the pain <laughs> of falling, he would probably, two months later, not be able to go up that stool. But not only can he climb up that stool, but he actually can climb on everything in the house. That's another problem, but it, it drives home a point that what's happening sometimes um, in all of our classes, we are allowing students to not struggle. We are student, allowing students not to do the work. And as a school community, we have to commit to a certain amount of time in every classroom, a certain time every week, where students are actually working. And we as teachers, we're facilitating that, we're supporting that, but the students are working, the students are sweating, the students are struggling, because that is where progress comes from. And we talk about, you know, there's adopting the Common Core, and then there's implementation, and then there's sustainability. In order to help really get to the level of sustainability, we have to put systems in place, whether it's um, using the same writing rubrics, using the same reading strategies. If you're being taught a reading strategy in English, why isn't there a poster up in that science classroom and a poster up in that history classroom reminding those kids that they know those reading strategies? We have a poster up in every classroom that says, read and solve problems like a detective, write like an investigative reporter, speak and listen like you're in a courtroom, and think until your head falls off. And we're asking every kid, if every single kid in the classroom, if you're in the classroom and a, a kid starts slacking or you're asking a kid to tackle a text, even if you don't know the first thing about teaching nonfiction reading or not, you know, informational text, even if you're, you know, the student is still struggling and you're trying to bring them to the level, if they can think, okay, well, what does it mean to read like a detective? We've also got a poster up there that says, well, what does it look like when you're reading like a detective? What does it look like when you're writing like an investigative reporter? We talk a lot about and recommend a lot about putting together a common core team in your school of different teachers from different disciplines to kind of put these materials together. And a lot of this came from collaboration. But putting these materials together and having them in every classroom, you're challenging yourselves and you're challenging your teachers to really make it a common core class, sorry, a common core school where every classroom is a common core classroom. And more importantly, you are reminding students that they're all part of the same thing. They're all, their goal is to really achieve the core, but you can't achieve the core in one class a day or two classes a day, or three classes over your four years in high school. You need to achieve the core, and the real way to achieve the core is to be practicing and struggling with and learning and working to learn the Common Core in every single classroom, in every single period, every single day throughout your years in middle school or high school.